So, we've got a leading think tank saying demand is high. Right. This is from another survey I'll give you the link to. It says the proportion of people who think project management will prosper over the next five years. So it's the number of people who responded. So you can just shout out, but we've got a microphone. What percentage do you think of respondents think that project management is going to prosper over the next five years? Somebody give me a percentage. 45? 74? That's quite a specific number. Not, not 75 or 80, 74. I like that. Um, higher or lower than 74 or 45? Any other offers? The actual number is 66%, and that's from the APM Salary and Market Trends Report 2021. So again, you can kind of Google that, or you, you can um, have a look. Or if you scan that QR code on here, you can log into a portal, and this stuff's on there anyway as well. So a leading think tank is saying demand is high. The industry is saying it's going to prosper over the next five years. So that's a good sign for project management. Well, I think it's a good sign for project management. And it's likely to remain high. So at the bottom here, this is a report from McKinsey, another credible source, clearly. And what they're saying here is, these are the roles or the kind of the skills, if you like, that there's going to be a shortage in over the next 10 years. And the thing that kind of jumps out at me, I don't know whether you've spotted it or not, is this one up here, that McKinsey are predicting that over the next, well, I guess it's next nine, eight or nine years, that there's going to be five and a half million shortfall in project management professionals in the next 10 years. So what's going on in my head in a perfect storm is demand is high and it's likely to remain high. So for me, how are we going to fill that gap? How are we going to fill that shortcoming, if you like? Because I'm sure if you think about your own organisations and the amount of change and the amount of products that are going on at the minute, it's kind of, it's, there's probably quite a lot going on. So demand is high. But will supply be low? So again, back to the World Economic Forum, a few years back, I first came across that on an in-flight magazine. So we're going back a long time for it to be on an in-flight magazine. It said 65% of children entering primary school today will ultimately end up working in completely new job types that don't exist yet. So demand is high, will supply be low? Now, I've got colleagues who says that project management isn't exciting as, um, I don't know, data or cyber. I mean, I beg to differ, really, if I'm being honest with you. But I think, you know, when you're up against things like, you know, my kids say they want to be YouTube stars. They're not going to be, but um, that's what they want to do. Or they want to, you know, play Minecraft for a living. Again, they're not going to but they want to. So how is project management going to compete? Demand high, will supply be low? What are we doing as an industry to address that? And that's kind of really what we're talking about here. So, today's project teams. By the way, don't forget Slido. If you've got any questions, keep dipping into them. Has anybody put any questions on yet? You'd forgotten about it, hadn't you? Just go on. Oh, the, um, let's go back to the code number. There we go. 425471. I couldn't remember that myself. I'm sorry about that. Um, 425471. So, there's a fantastic book. An absolutely fantastic book. It's this one down here. It's called It's the Manager by Jim Clifton and Jim Harter. Of Gallup, you might have heard of Gallup, you know, the, people, the research agency and Gallup polls. So these, that's like the CEO and CIO or somebody like that, Jim and Jim. 
And they've talked about today's project teams and they, they've summarised their research and that's what they're saying. They're actually saying it's today's workforce, but I think it extends to project teams. And these are kind of their findings. First of all, today's workforce has a far more racial, cultural and gender diversity than prior generations. Because I think we've got a generational thing going on here as well in project management, but how we inspire the next generation to come through. Remote working continues to increase. I think nobody's disagreeing with that at the minute. I don't know whether you guys are back at work in the office or still working from home or doing a bit of, bit of hybrid. Most workplaces are now matrixed. Well, we know that projects are matrixed anyway. Digitization is radically changing the nature of work. Digital transformation. I'm sure you as organizations will have had to kind of pivot it over to using things like Microsoft Teams, Zooms, automation, AI, et cetera, over the past couple of years. Number five, yes, it's blurring my life, I have to admit, okay, on the train, on the phone, watching the football. I'm always kind of looking at mobile technology. And then number six, the most desired perk is workplace flexibility. And we'll come on and look at in a moment that actually for the next generation, generation, well, it's not Z anymore, is it? I can't remember what it's called. Is it generation alpha, the next generation? I can't remember. Um, that workplace flex flexibility is kind of one of the things that they value the most. And I think that has implications for us as an industry, for us as a profession, about how we actually build that into our projects. So that's what they say is happening to the workforce. And I think that's happening to our project teams. Does anybody have any thoughts or comments around, do you agree with that, disagree with that in terms of our project teams? So I think we need a revolution of the project manager, and I've been a little bit kind of controversial here. But I'm sure some of you will read that and go, well, I'm not like that. So I'm thinking about the, I'm thinking about the macro level. I'm thinking about the, kind of the industry as a whole, not kind of individuals. Because I know I'm not like that. I've, well, I don't think I am. I probably am, actually. So again, from the same book, no, it's a World Economic Forum. The new workforce wants their work to have deep mission and purpose. They don't want old-style command and control bosses. They want coaches who inspire them, communicate with them, and develop their strengths. Okay? Now, I'm talking about kind of the new workforce. So we know demand is high. We're thinking supply is low. 65% of children entering primary school today will end up in jobs that don't exist yet. We've only got to look around your organisation, the industry, you could think about kind of, I'm from the north. Anyone in from the north? Oh, very nice, whereabouts? Oh, I'm in Harrogate, how nice. <laughs> so, we've heard of level up, haven't we, in the north? You know, kind of a... Uh, projects need that. The national infrastructure is all projects, isn't it? You know, so we... Demand is high, the pace of change is increasing. We need that next generation to come through into the profession. And the next generation are not wanting that command and control. Now, I work with a lot of organisations, and I see examples of this, and I see examples of where they do have kind of bosses who, and coaches who inspire them. So I think there's a revolution that's needed here to move towards that coaching, developing their strengths type project managerial role. That's kind of where my head's at. Um, and like I say, I'm not talking about individuals, I'm here I'm talking about the, org the kind of the industry as a whole. So, five traits of great it's actually the source is actually managers but I'm going to stick the word project manager in there because I think these equally apply to project managers as they do um, the workforce and again thinking about what's important to the next generation as well so we want 
our project managers to inspire teams to get exceptional work done. To get exceptional work done. Not good work, exceptional work. That deep mission and purpose that the future workforce is looking for. So how do we inspire that project team, that matrix team, if you like, to get exceptional work done? Setting goals and arranging resources for the team to excel. For me, that's a little bit servant leadership in that regard, you know, kind of empowering people, providing that leadership, providing that environment for people to excel. Number three. Influencing others to act, pushing through adversity and resistance. Okay. Removing the blockers, if you like. Helping the teams, inspiring them to get exceptional work. Building those, setting those goals. And then clearing the way, if you like. That's how I view that, for them to actually get on and do it. Building committed teams with deep bonds. That kind of team spirit, that deep mission and purpose, again, that the workforce wants, the project teams want. We know that projects are a group of people thrown together. Anyone who's been on a, any kind of project management course or any other... You'll have done things like Tuckman's model, you know, and team building. We're a group of people all thrown... Yeah. We're a group of people all thrown together, you know, kind of... The beginning of the project, you might be looking at your project teammate going, I don't like you. They might be looking at you go, going, I don't like you. They might be looking at the project manager going, I don't like you. I might be looking at you going, I don't like you either. It's like, am I bothered? Not really. It's about kind of getting those deep bonds to work together to inspire that exceptional work done. And then number five, I like number five. Because I think we're in a big data society, aren't we? Taking an analytical approach to strategy and decision making. I should also say that my background's in applied math, so I like analytics. But, not to the extent of common sense. That's what I'd say in that. So yes, we can absolutely take an analytical approach and use that data to help us make the right decisions. Well, or to help us make a decision. It doesn't have to be the right one, necessarily. So five great, tra again, according to Jim and Jim, five great traits of managers, and I extend that out to project managers. So, that all sounds great, but there's a big question looming, isn't there? Like, that's great, Ian, I agree with all of that, that's brilliant. How are we actually going to do that? I <laughs> have absolutely no idea. Well, this is what Jim and Jim say. So taking into account everything, that kind of, that demand is high, will supply be low, that future generation has different expectations from the workforce, it isn't all about money, it's about that deep mission and purpose, okay, and I have a strong belief, I have an absolutely strong belief that building that right project culture and that right workforce culture will help us bridge that generational gap. How are we going to fill that five and a half million people that McKinsey are asking for? And I have a strong belief that it's a lot's down to you as the project manager and the culture that you put in place around that project. So this is the past, according to Jim and Jim, that people work for their paycheck their own satisfaction, they worked for their boss, that their once a, once a year annual review, performance, annual performance, focusing on their weaknesses, and crucially to them, it's a job. And what I'm really kind of passionate about in project management is actually, now more than ever, you can have a career in project management, if you wanted one. I remember doing a careers questionnaire at school, it's going back a few years, and I came out as an architect. I don't think project manager was, a, was an option at the time to come out as, but you, know, you can now have a career in project management. So how do we, so somebody coming into the profession, how do we keep them in the profession to plug that skills gap, to plug that five and a half million gap? So we need to move to, Rather than my paycheck, 
What's my purpose, that deep mission and bonds that we're looking for? Rather than my own satisfaction, how are you going to continuously develop me? I'm sure some of you have done employee engagement surveys at work. And something that comes out regularly on employee engagement surveys is development opportunities. It's, you know, people like LinkedIn, LinkedIn Learning say that's a really big influencer over employee satisfaction. So how am I going to develop, not once a year, you know, but continuously throughout the year? I don't want to have a boss, I want somebody who can coach and mentor me. I want somebody who can kind of develop me, somebody who can work on my strengths and weaknesses. I don't want a once a year chat. Perhaps there's somebody who doesn't really know what I've been doing over the past year. Um, and especially in a matrix project team, you're working on a project who may not be your project manager, may not be your line manager. So do they know all about what you're doing on the project? So it's an ongoing thing. It's an ongoing conversation throughout the year. Rather than focusing on my weaknesses and how I need to improve them, what are my strengths? How can I harness those strengths? And this isn't just my job. This is my career. This is my life. This is what I choose to do. So I think we need a revolution. I think we need to move from the past to the future. And I think that journey is hard. I think it's going to take a transformation of organisations. But I think if we really want to kind of future-proof the profession and plug that skills gap, because that skills gap isn't going away and that... You know, supply and demand isn't going away, then I truly believe that we kind of need to move over to that future state. So, that concludes the slides bit, I think. Oh, yeah. And then we'll go into the questions. I'll leave that on there for a minute. Um, has anybody been putting anything in the questions? Oh, what have we got? Oh, I can't read that. There we go. There we go. So, to assist... PMs in the future market, should qualifications be for life like Prince 2 rather than short term as in the case of practitioners? What a good question. Do I answer this from a training partner <laughs> side of things or from an industry partner side of things? Um, I'm going to answer it from an industry. Um, no is my short answer. The reason being things change. I've been a Prince 2 trainer for 17 years. I oh, know I don't look old enough. Thank you. Um, Prince has changed in 17 years not a huge amount but it has Agile's kind of come into a lot, things a lot more haven't they and Prince has for example has moved to be a lot more Agile enabled so the industry moves on so just because we're qualified in it, just because I qualified in it 17 years ago does not mean that I know it all and it's that switch from kind of you know, doing it once to kind of like continuous lifelong learning, if you like. So I think there's always the opportunity to, to grow. So I don't believe this should be for life at all. How long you should be qualified after a year, that's a different conversation, but it's definitely not for life. Good question. Thank you, whoever answered that. Or, sorry, whoever asked that. Um, any other questions to kind of come up on that? Or anything from the floor? There's a, if anyone's got anything from the floor, there's a, we've got a microphone floating around somewhere. Has anybody got any questions? Oh, oh, sorry, down here. We might have to kind of run round with a microphone. Sorry about this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would like to know, um, how do you actually change, or where do you start to change the mindset of the well, older generation of project managers? Um, so the question is, how do we... <laughs> That's a big question, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. How do we start to change the mindset of the, old, of the older generation? Including myself. Uh, yeah, and I'll include myself in that older generation. Um, do you know what? Let's throw it open to the field. Let's throw it open to the floor. Any thoughts on how we might go about doing that? So if we go back to... Um, if we go back to here... How do we start to kind of move that to a, oh, there's a, oh, yes, gentleman over here. And I'll give you my view at the end. I'm not stalling for time while I'm a little bit. So, so I think it needs to be a cultural change from the top as well as what you're doing at sort of a mid-level. 
So yeah, I think yeah. it's really important that there needs to be a strategic approach rather than a tactical approach. It needs to be long term. And I also think that, although I loathe to say it a little bit, it probably needs to be built into people's objectives yeah, and yeah. how they behave and how they perform within the business. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I agree. You know, I, I remember working with the one organisation who, for their senior leaders, they built in, because that just reminded me, they built in um, project delivery KPIs into their objectives, which I thought was a really positive step. There's a lot of people off in that level often just be put onto projects, won't they, without it being their full-time job. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Any other thoughts around how we kind of how we start to move across? Oh, I'm going to have to run round again. Thanks, Nicola. It's um. I think it's just um, a case of being flexible. Um, and not stuck in your own ways um, and just having that flexibility to kind of choose um, like he said quite rightly just to change the approach change the culture from the top basically yeah 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 has anybody heard of the of the CPO the chief project officer I've kind of heard that term kind of go round I've not actually ever seen it in an organisation yet but I quite like the idea of that what you were saying about from the top, is there a C-level person who's charged with championing in project management or program management, portfolio management, PMO, etc., and kind of really driving it through? Or is it still seen as a little bit of an add-on on top of the day job? So I definitely think it starts from the top. And I quite like the idea of like a CPO. But I also think it can't be done on a project-by-project -project basis. It has to be done at an organisational level. And I think that's kind of where a number of different things come into play around how much does your organisation value project management. If they don't value it, they're never going to start to make that switch. Do you have that senior level kind of champion, if you like, to, to kind of really drive it through? And that can be quite a hard sell. Um, which is why I like the Gallup book so much, because that's based on empirical research. So it isn't just Jim and Jim making stuff up. It's based on years of research. Any other thoughts on that question? That's a great question. Oh, there's... Um, just a couple of ob observations. I think the my paycheck is a very interesting one because are we assuming that everyone is well paid? Um, Good question. Because I think, you know, um, there's some guy came up with something about needs that I think we still need to bear in mind and paycheck sort of drives and helps us satisfy those needs? Well, it could be. <laughs> is it a hygiene factor or is it a motivation factor? I mean, oh, well, let's have a quick straw poll. Paycheck, is that a big driver for people? I, like mm. <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yes, and I'm not, sure. I'm not too ashamed to say yeah. that. The ones that say no, can you tell us how much you're earning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll bring, the, we'll bring the microphone around. Yeah, Would you think... My, my son's in that space. No, I'm, I'm, I'm working... Yeah, I'm, uh, it's, it's a general observation, I think. Because uh, the other interesting for, one for me is my job or my life is, is also, you know, um, it will depend. You're gonna I get, think, yeah, I think... It's a big general... general it, there are generalisations, absolutely... For me, it's about see, for me, it's about seeing project management as a career rather than just an add-on or a, or a job, if you like. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what my 15-year-old son would say. There's probably a bit of, there's probably a bit of yeah, I'll take the money, Dad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, I just want to respond to, um, you know, it, it seeming that the more senior people are the least inflexible. I think um, I would say over the last 10 to 15 years, the senior management I've worked with that have come through, um, I think through their MBA programs, the importance of project management is becoming less and less. The interesting thing though, is that when you get into the real world, the only way they can deliver any initiative is through project management. So the interesting thing about the flexibility is, 
I spend half my time educating the new generation into getting them to understand that project management is it's, it's the army that's going to deliver, or it's going to be the engineers that deliver, or it's going to be the service people that deliver on their initiative. And um, that it's interesting to see how some, some, like all of us, some people respond positively, and yeah, some people absolutely. have been so through their own, lear you know, through the learning or what they've been taught, they become dogmatic in themselves. So it's yeah, an interesting and I think, one. I think there's a lot of organisations I still think need to jump in the bath and shout Eureka when it comes to project management and realise exactly that, that if they want to deliver on their initiatives, it's change, isn't it, you know, rather than just the magic that happens, you know. Um, I remember working with one organisation and I said, uh, you know, are you going to deliver on this project? And he said, don't you worry, and the magic will just happen. <laughs> so kind of like, if organisations have that kind of mindset of not projects, then the magic won't happen. So yeah. the it, more they realise that, the better. But then it's about how to make that work for them, isn't it? Because yeah. one size doesn't fit all. But it, but it is... I, I, don't, I hadn't realised it until um, I'd done a bit of research and then when I looked at some of the MBA programs that, um, that they've come through, that they've either dropped project management from the MBA program or it's, it's been minimised. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's real great loss. Com conversely, I, I've done work with universities where um, there's been a bit of project management training as part of undergraduates. So I wonder whether it might be kind of coming in that way a little bit as well. I think, I think there's a shift needed, definitely a shift needed. Um, another question. Any emerging framework paradigms in a post-Agile era? Again, I'm going to throw it open to the field. That's a good question, by the way. Any thoughts? Who asked the question? It might, can we... Could you just kind of elaborate on the question a little bit more? What were you thinking about in terms of... Um... No, maybe uh, to put it simply, I mean, uh, in the last 10 or so years, Agile is the new, you know, like the, the, the new kind of trend in various organizations. I'm just wondering, like, if you've got any insight on what might be the next big thing after Agile. Um, well... For me, Agile's always been around. It's like a 1990s band coming back around. It's kind of always been around and it's making a comeback. I think the PMO's doing the great things and, you know, kind of the PMO competency framework out now as well. If you haven't come across that, please do look at it because I think there's, you know, never more, than, now more than ever when you think about kind of like the demand and the shortage, building the right skills and capabilities in the PMO, I think is really important. important. So do have a look at kind of the PMO competency framework. In terms of actual frameworks, um, there's a little bit, I think, that kind of links in with the question above in terms of should it be for life? Well, yes, I said earlier, Prince 2 has changed. I wouldn't say it's changed dramatically. Um, project management, you still need planning, you still need risk. So parts of kind of project management will change. And yes, Agile is, you say, like you say, it's kind of the thing that um, people are looking at now. Um, I can't think of anything at the minute that's kind of on the horizon. I don't know if anyone else has got any insights as to kind of what's on the horizon. What? Oh, sorry, take the microphone. So it's more of a hybrid approach right now between Agile and yeah. Waterfall. And it's not one or the other, is it? It's not one no, or the like other. It can be approach, both. Yeah. Um, it can be both. So I do agree with the hybrid, the hybrid thoughts. Any other thoughts? Things are constantly adapting. I was just saying, you're constantly adapting. Um, if you think over the last 18 months, in terms of um, getting change in working, I've managed to get, I've managed to change so many, I've managed to make so much progress in the last 18 months 
compared to the previous 10 years. And that's because necessity. So it's actually, um, you know, it, it's that Prince just gives you the framework. You, you have to adapt the thing to work for you. Sometimes, sometimes you fail, but you've, you've got to have some courage and, and take a chance. Yeah, I think, and I think for me, I'm just kind of thinking about that question again. You've got to be flexible, absolutely. And I guess I've focused a lot on, pro well, I've used the word project a lot throughout this past session. Certainly in my experience, program management isn't quite as, organisations aren't quite realising if they're running programmes. And I think there's room for that to grow as well in the sense of saying the more we realise maybe we're running programmes rather than individual projects, I think there's room to grow. And I also think portfolio management, so just to finish the P3 if you like, I think there's huge benefits for organisations and I don't see, certainly through conversations I'm having with, with organisations, maybe that kind of portfolio management isn't quite where it should be. So if there's anything, I'd like, for me personally, I'd like to see a bit more in programme management and portfolio management than just pure project management. Uh, to address the point this gentleman raised about the sort of uh, project management being dropped from MBA programmes, well, I, I can't speak recently, but I did an MBA in the early mid-90s, and there was a little bit of project management. But since then, there have been you know, many universities offering masters in project management specifically. So possibly, the intellectual material has been moved from you know an MBA generalist course onto a, a specialist masters in project management. I know there's at least half a dozen universities offering you know, Masters in Project Management now. Thank you. Um, so, thank you for the questions. Good conversation. Controversial at times, I quite like that. Um, if you want to scan the QR, we're, at, we're just there actually. Or, there's a flyer with the same QR code on it. Um, if you scan, oh, indeed, there's a link there. There's <laughs> loads of different ways. If you just log in, there's a load of stuff on there. There's, um, what have we got on there? We've got, it's all free. We've got webinars. We've got articles. We've got the articles that I've talked about, the World Economic Forum, um, the APM Salary and Market Trends Report. They're all free downloads anyway. Um, we've got other articles on there, other useful stuff. And we're going to keep that updated every month. So if you log in, it's all free. You'll get new stuff going in there every month um, as we do w webinars and things like that into it as well. And please feel free to pass it around to any, any colleagues as well for them to kind of log in and join. So there you go, I'll leave that up. It's called the PM Hub. Um, so that's it, so thank you. Thank you for your conversation and engagement. Good questions, thank you.